you probably have at least one of these in your house. And you might be looking at trying to find some ways to expand your offerings. And these are a classic way of doing these. So I have VHSs, DVDs, and this elusive black diamond Disney VHS. So in this video today, I'll talk to you about what you should do with these things. Are they worth selling anymore? Um, what's up with this black diamond DV VHSs? And um, some proper ways of how to ship them. So they'll arrive to your customers in pristine condition. <music> Hi, I'm Jocelyn. I am the owner of A Southern Girl's Needs, and I am an online reseller for eBay, Mercari, Etsy, Amazon, Walmart, and all of those sorts of things. And I like to just provide people some information about how to get better at reselling, give you some insights on what it's like, how to how I resell and things of that nature. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to talk to you about the best to the least, I would say, what's going to sell you a lot faster. And when I first started to sell DVDs, it was about a year ago, and I remember I had so many of them. I told my friend, I said, I'm going to start a YouTube channel called PhD to DVDs, because I do have a PhD, and I had sold so many of these darn gone things. And... What was nice about it was when things started, every now and then you'll have this ebb of flow where things will go really well and you'll sell a lot of something and then things won't sell very much of. I always had DVDs because I had so many of them. And if you're looking at the best way to do it is start with any DVDs or VHSs, Blu-rays, whatever you have in your house, start off with those. But if you're thinking about a price point in which you should get them at in order to make some decent money, I bought a whole mess of them from this one lady off of Facebook, just a local pickup. She had brand new ones. She had used ones. They were all in excellent conditions. Um, every note, no scratches on them. There was only like one that didn't have a DVD chip missed out on. But I swear I got about 200 of them. It, it, it was an insane amount. And I calculated them and they were 10 cents. So if you're looking at sourcing the, cheap, the cheapest, the better. So try your best to get them really cheap. 10 cents was pretty good. Now, if you've already had them in your library, you've already got a sunk cost into them then um, that's something to think about. But if you're going out trying to get them, get them as cheap as you can. 10 cents is great. I would probably go no higher than 50 cents for a used or a dollar for a brand new one. So let's talk about these. What's better? We have, I have all three kind of these modern, we'll call them modern, types of movies there is the brand new dvd that's still sealed that's the best one to get if you can get brand new ones now this doesn't mean that they're going to sell some so there are some brand new dvds that i have that just they were just weren't a very popular title and i have listed the price very low but i've also found some really good ones like there was a demi moore some kind of mermaid not a mermaid kind of a witchy something or something like that it was crazy like i saw the price it's like 20 something dollars that there is no way um but apparently it was out of print and if you find one that's out of print that's even better so if you're searching for and you're checking the comps, it'll say like OOP, which means out of print. So if you find one, whether or not it's used or new and it's out of print, definitely get them. But this is the Creme de la Creme DVDs, brand new, sealed, still in the original package. Now, you'll need to be careful because I made this mistake one time. They're easy to find at Goodwill. I'll just go through and start looking and double check to see which one has a seal on them. And I grabbed one and then I got home and I saw at the bottom it had um, that repackaged it where it was like used. I said, oh, doggone it, you know. So just be real careful about those. So these are the best ones to get. 
the next ones that sell are used DVDs. Now, um, I'm not, not much to say about them. They've been brand new, used, not brand new, used. I, when I take pictures of them, what's nice about this is that you can just grab your phone, you can sit down, especially with the brand new ones. I, um, you just need to just use whatever the, the photo that eBay provides to you. And you just say, okay, this is exactly what I'm selling. Just make sure that the picture and stuff is right. And that if it's a full screen and versus the wide screen and stuff like that. But most of the time it just grabs the UPC and it does a good job. So it's easy to go do them. The harder ones to do is the ones that I use. Because I do take a picture. I open it up. But that also helped me when I was going through them to make sure that I actually had the DVD. Now, some people take the DVD out and flip it over to double check. I probably wouldn't buy used DVDs from anything but a personal seller from their, um, a personal person from off of Facebook. I don't do used DVDs from Goodwill just because I've noticed when I've looked at them, make sure you do take them out and you flip them over and look at them and they need to be um, pristine, like no, no scratches or anything on that. And I have found that sometimes when I've been looking for them at Goodwill, they haven't been the most pristine. And you just don't want to return on a used DVD that you're not going to buy, you know, you're not going to, unless it's some out of print, you're not going to sell that, the price point is not going to be that great. So um, you don't want to return on that for somebody on, on that. So make sure you check them out. Um, some people even load them up, watch them, and if you want to, that's what you want to do. Same thing, though, but just scan it and then also how to do it. Now, where do you sell these at? You can, I've sold these on Facebook. No, I don't do sell them on Facebook just because um, I, I've noticed that most of the time they're, um, kind of the lots are, are sort of what people will, will want. And so I'll talk about lots. eBay is a great place. Amazon. Now, DVDs are um, gated. So you will need to go to um, a distributor and purchase at least 10 of them. And then um, they'll get sent to your house. Don't go through, don't buy 10 of them through Best Buy or something like that. You have to go through a distributor that's going to send you an invoice and then take the picture and then provide the information and then you can get ungated. Now the weird thing about getting ungated for DVDs for Amazon is like certain ones were like um, Warner Brothers was but Sony wasn't. Sort of weird but it's like okay if I wasn't gated in one or I had to just ask for permission and it let me do it. It was sort of weird but um, that's how you get ungated in DVDs. Now once you get ungated in DVDs um, you can sell them used as well. So you can sell both used, new DVDs on Amazon and you can sell used DVDs on Amazon. Another place I sell them on is Walmart. Um, it's sometimes the more popular ones are a little bit harder to beat Walmart on their prices on. The same thing with Amazon. They have a lot of them. They're a little bit harder to beat their prices on. But the more obscure ones. But also with Amazon, I mean, eat, uh, sorry, Walmart, you have to purchase like $35 worth or something to get free shipping. And so most of the sellers on um, Walmart, I think, have them as free anyway with free shipping and then you if you want expedited you can add even more Macari is a good place to also sell DVDs so those are the places that I sell DVDs on um, very easily done now the next one that I have that's sort of in that genre which I am stopping is blu-rays blu-rays I only got um, I only have all new blu-rays they just don't sell um, you can get a higher price point because of the Blu-ray, but for some odd reason, they just they just don't sell as well as DVDs. My imagine is most people have a DVD player, and other people just don't have a Blu-ray player. So I am not going to find and source Blu-rays anymore just because they haven't been selling very. Why would anybody buy DVDs or something from that from you? Can't they just stream it? I said, well, yes and no. 
Yes, you can stream it, but there's a lot of places in the United States where they don't have unlimited internet. If you're living in a rural area, their internet might still be like satellite, so you don't have unlimited high-speed internet. And then streaming a DVD, I'm sorry, streaming a movie would be very cost prohibitive to them because they're going to use up all their data. They don't have, they have a limited amount of data. The other thing is sometimes buying them on um, the digital copy, you can buy the real copy for even cheaper. So you can find a digital copy for $12.99 and you can find a brand new copy on eBay or Amazon or whatever for $9.99 and you keep it and you don't have to worry about well, which platform did I have it on and are they going to stop selling them and I can't remember the account. Is it there for you? And other people just like particular types of movies. They'll say, you know, that's my favorite movie. I... For example, upstairs, I don't have, um, I have internet right here, but I don't have it connected to the other rooms in the house. Uh, I mean, I have Wi-Fi and stuff, but I have like a DVD player in one room. If I'm in that room doing other things, I don't want to have to sit there and, and connect my, my laptop and things like that. I just want to pop in the DVD if I'm in that room, let's say I'm cleaning. Okay, so that's that. Other things that people are going to um, have that you might be interested in sending, CDs. CDs still do pretty good. Um, the more popular the ones, um, if you have some in your own personal collection, that's good. But um, CDs are also, people still buy CDs. People still have cars with CD players. The only thing I don't have is an 8-track. If I did have 8-track, I would be pretty set. Another thing I have been noticing a lot of is more people selling the disc only. And this is usually a person who, and I, I did it as well. So I pulled out the DVD, I put it in one of those, what was it like, Logitech, one of those bags, one of those organizers, and threw out the case. Because I, you know, it was like it was taking up room. I could put 50 of them in there versus having stacks and stacks of them. Um, so I've been noticing a lot more people are selling them with just the single disc and I would imagine that they don't have the case. Now you can go and buy the case uh, and just the CD case offline off of any sort of, um, any sort of place that sells the cases. You won't have the picture in the cover or anything like that, but you would at least have the case. One thing I have been noticing, those people that sell them as a single, they're doing it, um, I, it's, I, I think it's some type of package, um, a U.S. Postal Service, but they'll say, disc only, no tracking. And if you're just starting out, I probably wouldn't recommend that because part of your metrics is the tracking. And how often are you adding tracking to your thing? So if you want to, just go ahead and, and focus on the ones that you might have the case. But if you, if you don't have the cases and you want to do it, it might be just a good idea to find at least just, just a case and send them out with that as well. Because what happens is with the tracking, and I hate to be, you know, reveal what actually happens to folks, is that um, they can tell, your buyer can say they never got it. And you have no, absolutely no recourse. All they have to say is I never got it. You don't have a tracking, you can't say it, it arrived, give it a few more days. And I have had to ship a few things that were smaller that I didn't have to put tracking on them. And for the most part, people were, and this wasn't DVDs, but for the most part, people were very honest. And they would say, you know, they wouldn't tell me, they would, they, and I've gotten it, stuff like that before. But you might get into that situation. And please don't do that if you are here and you're like, let me go buy some stuff, be honest, that sort of thing. Okay. Another thing I have that I don't have one, it's downstairs, it's um, books on CD. Books on CD is also great to have. Um, they sell pretty well as, as, as well. Um, even they'll be like all beat up and stuff. Um, the case, you know, as you put them in your car and stuff, they kind of kind of get kind of cruddy. Um, but those sell pretty well as well. So books on um, CD. Now, the next one um, that you might have is blank DVDs. Now, this one actually has something on has Crank Yankers. I'll remember if y'all remember that show. Um, but you can buy, um, you can sell blank v, uh, VHSs. 
you can sell blank um, DVDs, CDs, those sorts of things. Here's the caveat. They can't go media mail. All of these other ones can go media mail. And that the rate is right now it's two eighty nine for less than a pound. So you can sell these are always going to be two eighty nine by themselves or two eighty nine. Now once you start getting into more of the heavier boxes of you know the little ring cases of DVDs CDs they're going to get heavy. And they're probably going to be almost over a pound, if not close to a pound. They cannot go DV. They cannot go media mail because there's no media on it. So those have to go first class. Another thing that sells pretty well, besides the blank ones, is the cleaner. So a VHS cleaner. I remember I had one. I listed it, and I think a couple days later it sold. Just that little thing. You put it in, and it cleans the heads on those on the VHSs. Another thing that does that I still sell is um, cassette tapes, right? So this is a new cassette tape that I have. Of course, this is sort of like uh, kind of obscure sort of thing. But if you have cassette tapes that are or D, or CDs that are you know popular musicians and things of that nature, you can. People have cars; they still have cassette tapes in them. People have systems in their house that still have cassette tapes. People still have cars that have CD players on it. So don't just think like, well, my car, you know, I don't, I just have a satellite. I don't have a CD player anymore. Lots of people still do. But with VHSs, I don't find they sell very well. I've got this Ortson Wells Citizen Kane steel sealed. This is probably one of the first things I have ever listed and I can't get this sucker sold for anything. So, um, but I heard, um, People said like old uh, monster and horror movies, they sometimes do, but that's just hearsay. You know, I don't have them. I know I haven't sold them, so I can't sit there and say, yes, all the monster ones I have, I don't have those. Okay, the next one that you, that I, if I'm in these groups and you'll get a new so that comes on and they have this question about this one, which is the Black Diamond Disney VHS's and I checked for this one and it was Aladdin black diamond um, What's special about it? I darn don't know, but it's the it's this right here So when you hear people say, you know, what's black diamond? This is it. It's got black diamond on the side um, Something about it's the original copy or something like that devil if I know but you'll see some that are like $500, $5,000, and people will first start off and they'll say, oh my gosh, I got this this, this D, Disney VHS. And we said, check the solds. So you need to check what sold. What someone has it listed for is something completely different. And I think I saw that, I mean, some people still have these brand new sealed, and they're selling them for 10 bucks, 10, 20 bucks. I think something like this might be a, like maybe five dollars or something like that. So they are not. Sorry, guys. Black Diamond, the um, Disney movies are are not what they uh, perceive themselves to be. Okay. Now let's talk about how to ship them. And there's a couple of ways. Well, if it's a VHS or something like that, you know. Um, or any of these sorts of things. Um, don't ever ship any of these things just wrapped up in, um, um, bubble mail. And I saw somebody do this the other day. They were a big hardest seller and they said, yeah, I sold this DVD. This is what I sold. They did like this. I got a little bit less. Put it up together. And they threw it in a poly bag. Don't do this. The reason why is because these things aren't very, they're pretty sturdy, yeah, but they, they've got a little give to it. So there becomes, and some people really want the case in pristine condition. Someone may even mention that. They were nice enough when, before I started doing it this way, was they said, you know, I, it, got, it came warped. And, and they said, you know, just want to let you know, just you might want to package it a little bit better. And I said, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So don't do that. Don't just throw it in here and send it off. 
For VHS, I mean for DVDs, there are these DVD mailers. Um, they are little styrofoam, not styrofoam, um, cardboard. They're cardboard. And they fold up really nicely. It takes just a minute. You just throw in your DVD into it. And it folds. And there it is. Okay, it's got cardboard, it's a lot sturdier, okay, and it's already there for you. Now, it's pretty, like once you get it in there, it's it's not going to, sometimes it's a little bit more sturdier than others. So if you're going to mail it like this, go ahead and put some tape on it. Um, just tape it up a little bit because um, it can come undone and then the thing goes out. Usually what I do is I put it in here and then I put it in a poly bag. Now this one fits really nicely and I said I was going to check the, the poly bag size and I know I have a ruler. Old school ruler. So this one, these are size, I think they're, um, they're nine and a half by 13. So the nine and a half by 13, I take this and I throw it in here. Fold it up. Seal it and I'm done. Okay, and then just slap the mailing, just slap the, um, the, the thing on it. And there you are, it's done. And these typically weigh about the same. So I use pirate ship a lot when I do my shipping. Um, if I'm not using, oh shoot. Ah, sorry, the screen just went blank. So I use pirate ship a lot. Um, and what I usually do is just say, this is a DVD mailer. And then I just double check that the size is, just check the, you know, um, the, uh, the weight of it, usually these are about five and a half ounces, typically, um, just a normal one. Now, any of the thicker ones, any you know, of the box sets or stuff like that, those aren't going to fit in here. So that's the only bad thing about those. Um, and it does add a little weight to it. Now, I will typically send the DVDs or any of these media by um, media mail. If I happen to find one that's a little more pricey, then I will send it um, first class. Because sometimes this media mail is like two to eight days, and then first class is supposed to be two to three days. And sometimes before, the bad thing is before the price hike of, um, it used to be 280, I don't know, just nine cents doesn't seem that much. But if the person was close enough to me, I could ship cheaper first class than I could with media mail, but now it's only $3.01. But the other thing is if you want to ship it first class and, and you don't have those mailers or the mailer does add a little bit of weight, it will, it will bump anything up over that five ounces, is I use these. And what I do is, you can see this was an Amazon box. So if I get an Amazon box or any other box that I've gotten and it's not in the best condition, I will take um, a box cutter and I will cut up the box and I'll just make little, little strips of cardboard for myself. And it's not as thick as the other ones, but it does do the same sort of job. And then all I do is just set it like this. I'll cut it down to size. If I have, um, like if I had like a poly bag or something like that, I'll throw it in the poly bag or I'll cut it right here on the top. Or if I don't have a poly bag, I will maybe put a little tape on it or um, usually not tape because some people like the tape. I'll just wrap it in like some cellophane and it actually does pretty much the same thing as the other one does. But just the other one just looks a little bit nicer. That's why it just, and it's quicker and faster. And you can find those online. So that's how you should mail those. Any of the other ones, you can still do the same thing. I would do the same thing with um, a cassette tape. Is you could take this and gosh, you could just throw the, 
flip this under like that just tape it and there it is you just don't want to just throw it into um, any sort of bag without some extra protection to it now the question then becomes is it worth selling DVDs anymore so I will admit that when I first started selling DVDs about a year ago um, COVID had first came in and people were inside and I assume they just needed some some extra stuff to get to now the problem came um, when I was looking at my inventory list like gosh I haven't been selling that many DVDs anymore and I looked and economics had set in supply and demand there was a lot more suppliers people who like you and I selling these things and the demand was there but it probably there was more supply than demand and I noticed that in order to get the average price of them sold was about 50% of what I was selling them a year ago. So in that case, I am not sourcing them anymore because it's just not worth selling. Um, I used to be able to sell a used one for $8 and a brand new one for $16.20. Bucks. So now it's down to $5, $4, and I said, I just, I don't have time for that anymore. So once they're out the door, maybe later on in the future, if things change, you know, I might source them again. But um, now I'm just trying to get them out the door. They're easy to store as well. I just put them in a box just alphabetically and then I just put them off into some kind of corner like in the closet and then whenever I get an order I just know okay what what did it start with it usually like if like if it's like D or A or something I'll go up with the second one um so a beautiful mind okay those are with the B's I'll just go in and grab those out the um the blu-rays because they're a different size and I don't have that many I just have them in a separate box by themselves so what else did I want to say so should you start doing them oh lotting them up so one thing I did that oh, did pretty well but hasn't had any traction in a long time I just went through and I got really tired of doing like the individual DVDs and so I was like I really want people just to buy a bunch so I did a variations and eBay you can do variations on DVDs and so I would just say here's the DVDs here are the titles I would list them out it was like build your own library each DVD was like a 250 and then shipping was like 299 and then each additional one was 250 but you could add in like a dollar for shipping or something like that and at first people did I did really well on that people took it took took I wouldn't say advantage but they, they bought a bunch, like so many people bought like 10 of them. Um, so like, tw you know, it wasn't that much. By the time I put it in a box, it still wasn't, uh, they covered the shipping and stuff like that. Um, but that hasn't, I haven't sold those in a while. So I'll probably go around and probably re re redo, either redo that again, um, make it a little bit different. Probably we have the actual pictures versus just the list of the items. So I need to change that up. The other thing is lotting them up as well. I have not found, I found when, if you lot things up, people kind of want a bunch. They want like 10, 20 of them for a certain amount of uh, money, whatever that money amount is for you. Um, so I was trying to put them together as like um, the series, like I had all the Twilight movies. I put those together, had like, all the Mummy movies, all the Spider-Man um, transporters all of those things so I tried to put them as series and I also put them as like um, off uh, no, the star like all like a bunch of Kate Hudson movies I did not do well in those I don't think I sold any of those when they were like that maybe because I priced them too high I don't know but I eventually just broke them up and they sold on their own so um, that might be if I was to start I would maybe say you know start with trying to sell them individually and then if it doesn't work then lot them up um but the whole you know I'm gonna get all the Spider-Man ones nobody and, and I think it's weird I think people just have they may buy one Spider-Man like why well, don't need all three I just want the Spider-Man too like yeah I didn't really like I like Spider-Man the first one second one was okay but I don't like the third one so I, I get that it's you have to buy them all at the same time and sometimes that doesn't that doesn't do so well so that's lotting if you want 
free shipping or no free shipping. If the best that you can, if you're lotting them up, it's all right to put some some, some uh, a shipping cost on them. But most of the time, people, if you look at the comps, most of the time it's 100% free shipping. So that's why I also say, you know, I, you know, this DVD that I probably may have listed a year ago at $16.99. Now I'm having to sell it for $9.99. Also with free shipping, they're they're running about fifty percent off. Great, not so much reselling price. They're not great reselling price. Remember, ten cents. That's what you want. Ten cents is pr free is great. Ten cents is pretty is really awesome. Fifty cents if they're used, and a dollar at the most if they're brand new. But if you want to build up your library right now and you want some, some DVDs, this is a really great time. They're not selling at great reselling rate. You might be able to find some on Facebook, and that's where I got my biggest lot from, was just from Facebook. Um, some my local. But you do want to look to double check to see if they do have some new ones. Because uh, I got a mix of new and used. So make sure that you do get some, some new ones in there. That you don't just get all used. Because they're just, the pricing on them is pretty pretty low. Um, but unless they may have some, you know, some really interesting, interesting ones that sell at a little bit of higher price. So that's the media stuff. I hope you um, got some good information. Good luck on selling them. Um... Feel free to uh, put some comments in there um, and let me know how you um, feel about DVDs, whether or not you are um, doing a good job. Not like I'm doing a good job, but if you are actually selling them. Sorry, I'm kind of looking around looking for, looking for something. Um, if you're selling them or anything like that, if you're... If things are going pretty well for you, that would be really great. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.